Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to try to find the momentum eigenfunctions of a particle in a one-dimensional box. In the previous video, we found the eigenvalues. Here, we're going to try to find the eigenfunctions. Now, where we're going to start is the following. If we take the momentum operator and operate on the eigenfunction, the presumed eigenfunction, that should equal the momentum eigenvalue times the momentum eigenfunction. And we already knew from the previous video that the momentum eigenvalue is n pi h bar over L. Now, this is only correct if the, the sigma sub n are indeed the eigenfunctions of the momentum operator. And to show you why that has to be the case, let's operate on a different eigenfunction. In this case, let's operate on the energy eigenfunction. So we go ahead and we have the momentum operator right here. That's defined right there. We forgot what that's equal to. There's a momentum operator and we're going to operate not on the momentum eigenfunction, but on the energy eigenfunction. When we do that, we get h bar over i. We can take the square root of 2L out. We take the derivative of the sine of this. So we end up with the n pi over L times the cosine of n pi x over L. And then we can see that it's not going to be equal to the eigenvalue times the momentum eigenfunction because realizing that the eigenfunction is a sine function and what we got over here was a cosine function. So just looking at these two alone, we already know that they're not going to be equal. So to be valid, to, to have a valid momentum eigenfunction, they have to be equal when we operate on it with the momentum operator. So if we take advantage of the concept that the sine of an angle can be written in the exponential form like this, e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta divided by 2i, then we can let the eigenfunctions, the presumed eigenfunctions, the ones we're looking for, expressed in this way right here. Now that, take a, that takes a little bit of forethought, but somehow when we take the derivative of this, we should be able to get the product of the eigenvalue with the eigenfunction back. So let's see if we picked the right value and then we'll work our way backwards to see how that was actually done. Because you may look at that and go, well, where did those numbers come from? How did he come up with that equation? Well, just stay tuned and see what this is like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the momentum operator and operate on, let's take this one first, the positive eigenfunction, the presumed positive momentum eigenfunction. So this is going to be equal to, that would be uh, h bar over i times the derivative of, and now we have this presumed eigenfunction right here, we have 1 over 2i times the square root of 2 over l times e to the i times n pi x over l. Now you can see that this here, we can that's simply a constant that come out front. So this is going to be equal to h bar over i times i 1 over 2i times the square root of 2 over l. And I'm going to be, leave a little bit of room because now when we take the derivative here, we get e to the i n pi x over l. So the derivative of an exponential function, it's the same exponential function times the derivative of the exponent, so that would be i n pi over l. So we have i n pi over l. Now, simplifying this just a little bit, we can get, go ahead and, cal and cancel this i with this i, and then we look at the eigenvalue of the momentum of a particle, which is this. So let's identify what we have over here. So we have an n, a pi, and an h bar in the numerator. So let's circle those. We have an n, pi, and an h bar in the numerator. And we have an l in the denominator. So this makes up the eigenvalue of the momentum of that particle. And then what do we have left? We have a 1 over 2i times the square root of 2 over l times e to the i n pi x over l. And then if you look back, and let's see if I have a different color here. Now when you look back over here, that was the assumption that we made in the first place, that this was going to be our eigenfunction. And notice what's left, the 1 over 2i, the square root of 2 over l, and the e to the i n pi x over l is left. So we realize that if we take it into an exponential format, 
And then if we put the right constants in front, such that when we take the derivative, we end up with this portion right here. So that would be equal to the momentum eigenvalue. Plus we would then get back instead, of course, the energy, uh, the, the energy eigenfunction. We're going to take the momentum eigenfunction. So we're going to replace this by this quantity right there. And notice, sure enough, we got the right value. We can do the same thing for the negative value. And so in other words, if we, um, if we take the momentum of the negative eigenfunction, this is equal to h bar over i times the derivative with respect to x of 1 over 2i times the square root of 2 over l times e to the minus i n pi x over l. If we now take the derivative of that, we get the following. So this is equal to, we have h bar over i, just like before. We have the 1 over 2i, just like before. We have the square root of 2 over l, like before. And then we have, uh, let's see, if we take the derivative of this, we get e to the minus i n pi x over l. And then here we go ahead and then we plug in the i n pi over l, but the negative i n pi over l. Now, did we get the correct value? Well, it turns out if we take the eigenvalue in the negative direction, this will give us a minus n pi h bar over l. So we need to have a minus n pi h bar over l. And before we do that, at least let's cancel out this i and this i. But again, let's identify what we have here. We need a minus because here we have a plus because that was for the momentum going to the right. Now we need a minus for the momentum going to the left. So this will now be replaced by minus n pi h bar over L for the negative eigenvalue momentum or momentum eigenvalue. So we have an n, we have a pi, we have an h bar, and we have an L. And then let's see what we have remaining. What we have remaining should be the same as what's in here. We have a one over two i, we have the square root of two over L, and indeed, we have an e to the minus i n pi x over l. So it works for both the momentum in the right direction and the momentum in the left direction, which means that right here, these values, and let me get my purple pen here, these are indeed the eigenfunction or the momentum eigenfunction of a particle in a one-dimensional box. And that's how we know.